Good evening guys and welcome back to my channel. Tonight I'm going to be doing a makeup declutter for you. So if you like declutters and organization and self-care and luxury makeup and perfumes and all of those kind of things and you're not already subscribed, I would love if you would consider subscribing. This makeup declutter is something I've been meaning to do for a while and grab yourself a cup of coffee. I have a feeling it's going to be just a little on the longer side, but I don't know about you, but I love long declutter videos. So let's just hop on into it. All right guys, so unfortunately after I finished filming, I realized that the microphone was not plugged in. So I just filmed for an hour and a half and there is no sound. <laughs> so I'm gonna have to do voiceover. Hopefully you guys are okay with that. So this is the makeup case that I keep my makeup in. It is a Louis Vuitton makeup case. I do have a translucent clear one that I got from Amazon that was only like $10. And I really like that one for when I travel. It's just a little bit more convenient, it's smaller. But for now, this is the case that I'm keeping all of my makeup in. And this is the little container that I use to keep my makeup brushes in and I do use all of these brushes I don't think there's any brushes in here that I really need to declutter But at the end of the video I'll go through all of my brushes as well and see if there's anything in there that I can't get rid of um, In addition to the makeup so I'm just going to pull items out of here one by one and see what grabs my attention and make two piles, one pile for stuff that I'm going to be keeping and one pile of stuff that is going to go that I will be decluttering. So the first item that I'm going to look at is this Fenty matchstick in the color amber. So you guys, this is an amazing matchstick. I got this specifically for contouring. As you can see, it's a very like medium kind of a neutral brown shade and it's also not shimmery or anything like that so this is absolutely perfect for contouring the nose i got this specifically to contour the nose and it is perfect and i do have a pretty light skin tone so if you guys have a light to medium skin tone and you're looking for a great contour stick this one is amazing i don't use it around my hairline or to do the cheeks i just use it on my nose and absolutely love it so this was such a good purchase and i'm definitely going to be holding on to my matchstick the next item is this little palette from Physicians Formula. This is the Bronze Booster palette, and I only ever use that middle tone in the palette. The bottom color is a little bit too orange and too dark for me, and the top color is a little bit too dark to be used as a highlight. So it's meant to have like a highlight and a middle tone and a deeper tone. I actually only ever use the middle tone, and I use it to contour the sides of my forehead and also the cheeks. So that is what that middle tone looks like. And as you guys can see, it's not shimmery. It's a very neutral, kind of a cool toned matte brown slash tan so it's perfect for contouring and this is the second time i've had this physician formula um, palette i have been using this for many many years i absolutely love it it's one of the best contouring palettes that i've ever come across so this i'll definitely be holding on to Little side note you guys, but how aesthetically pleasing are all the colors. I absolutely love when makeup and perfume and decor all looks beautiful together. It just makes me so very happy. Okay, the next item is a foundation, and this is from MAC. This is the MAC Studio Radiance for face and body in the color C0. So this is actually the coolest, lightest, the lightest shade in the cool range that they had. And I had actually gone to a MAC counter, which I had never done before, and I asked them to color match me. And this was the color that they came up with. And just as a little side note, I've been having some difficulty figuring out whether I am actually cool or warm undertone, um, but this one does seem to match me pretty good. It's a brand new foundation. Um, I haven't really had much of a chance to use it i really like the finish it's quite a nice like satin natural almost dewy finish but very natural looking great for dry skin so i'm pretty happy with this one and because it is brand new and i haven't had much of an opportunity to use it i'm definitely going to be holding on to this foundation Next we have a mascara and this is the L'Oreal Lash Paradise Mascara. Now this one I think I am going to pass on because even though it's a really nice mascara and I like the way that it makes my lashes look, this one takes a little bit more rubbing and tugging at my lashes to get it off when I wash my face at night. I do use a double cleanse, I use an oil cleanser and then I follow up with a gentle facial cleanser. Um, but I just don't like when mascaras take extra effort to remove. I try to be really gentle around my eye area. And yeah, so even though I really like this one, I think I'm gonna pass it along. I also had a couple of like allergic reaction type of things happen when I was at work. Both days I wore this mascara. My eyes got kind of red and itchy. So yeah, this is not working. I'm definitely going to pass this one on. 
So this other mascara I just recently got, this is the Maybelline Colossal Volume and this is in the color Glam Black and it's just it's a very basic um, drugstore mascara that I have used lots before and I know that it works for me and it's also pretty easy to remove when I'm washing my face at night so I just seem to go back to it over and over. Usually you guys I don't do a full face of makeup, I just usually do sunscreen, maybe a little bit of concealer or foundation here and there and mascara and I call it a day. So I like something very simple, very easy to grab and go the price of drugstore mascaras you guys is not cheap like i think this drugstore mascara i think this mascara was like 19.99 which is insane because two years ago you could get the same one for i think like seven dollars or eight dollars so definitely get them on sale that is the moral of the story get them on sale <laughs> The next item is this Hourglass Ambient Lighting Palette, and I absolutely love Hourglass products, you guys. So this is what the colors look like. Is this not just the most perfect, most beautiful bronzing highlighting palette you have ever seen? You have kind of more of a neutral, kind of a cool, shimmery tone at the bottom. You've got the middle tone there, which is perfect for highlighting, and then you have a little bit more of a warm, like tan color toward the top. So these are absolutely perfect for doing a little bit of bronzing, highlighting, and you can even do a little bit of contouring if you don't mind your contour having a little bit of a sheen to it and this formula is just so pleasing i'll show you what it looks like on my fingertips it's the most satiny soft beautiful airbrushed feeling powder it's just the most absolute perfect bronzing palette in the world i'm obsessed so yeah i'm really happy i got it it's brand new but definitely going to be holding on to it the next item is a pair of false lashes. So you guys, I rarely do false lashes um, and I do have very sensitive eyes. So even when I do put false lashes on sometimes, they do tend to irritate my eyes a little bit, especially when I have to get the glue off. I feel like the glue stays on for days and I just don't like the idea that it's getting gunk and like attracting dirt and dust and whatever else around my lashes and yeah overall they're just not my favorite thing i'm just such a simple person i like to just put on a great mascara maybe a couple coats of a great mascara but i don't ever do a full glam look and these lashes are not even glam they're very simple and basic <laughs> i think i don't really need to keep them so these i am going to pass on Next we have an eyelash glue. So I feel like an eyelash glue is something that maybe I should keep because sometimes I do get adventurous and want to try a new set of lashes. Even though I don't wear them very often, sometimes I'll see a beautiful set of lashes or I'll get influenced from somebody and wanna go and pick up a pair of like Ardell lashes. And then I need glue and I always end up having to repurchase glue, which gets expensive. The lashes themselves are not too expensive, but the glue is what makes it a little bit more expensive. So I think I'm gonna hold on to this just in case I get adventurous and do want to try a new set of lashes. The next item is a concealer. This is the only concealer that I currently have, and this is from Ilia, and this is in the shade Mallow. So I have a really hard time finding the perfect shade for me, you guys. Let me know if you guys have similar experiences finding perfect shade matches. And that being said, Ilia doesn't have a ton of different shades in their concealer range, but this is the one that's the closest for me. I do enjoy it. I do wear it on a pretty regular basis. So even though it's not the absolute perfect shade match for me, um, I'm going to hold on to this one because it is the only concealer I have at the moment so until I find a concealer that suits me even a little bit better or that I like a little bit better I'll hang on to this one this one also has pretty good coverage and I do like the finish so next we have my holy grail finishing powder you guys and this is from hourglass and this is the ambient light finishing powder in the shade diffused light is I believe what it's called and I absolutely love this finishing powder you guys let me show you what it looks like so this finishing powder I've had for quite a while you can see that I have used a little bit of it and what I love about this is first of all the formula is so soft and powdery and when I put it on my skin it literally makes my skin look airbrushed and flawless it blends everything in perfectly it just feels really nice it looks really nice i 10 out of 10 recommend this for a finishing powder if you are on the hunt for one so this one i'm definitely going to be keeping because it's one of my absolute favorite products and it's a holy grail um, if i run out when i run out i will definitely repurchase this one the next item is a Dior lip balm. I can't even tell you the type of lip balm that this is. I think it's like a plumping lip balm. To be honest, you guys, I was really influenced by the packaging for this lip balm. I do not usually wear it. I don't usually do a full lip or anything with like um, lip liner, lipstick, the whole shebang. I pretty much just go with Ballistex SPF 20. That is my favorite thing to put on my lips. It cost about 
$3 in comparison to $40 or $50. It protects my lips from the sun. It makes my lips look plump and hydrated. It's sheer, so it's like a nude lip gloss. Why would I pay $50 for something to put on my lips when I can pay $3 and get it in a little tub that protects my lips? I definitely was influenced to get this lip balm. Um, because of the packaging and because it is extremely aesthetically pleasing. It's very beautiful in photos. It takes beautiful pictures if you're into flat lays, if you're somebody who likes to um, take pretty photos for Instagram, if you like to set pretty things out on a tray for decor. Uh, definitely is very aesthetically pleasing. So I'm not going to lie. I was a little bit influenced by the packaging, but I'm going to hold on to it because even though I don't wear it, it is a beautiful item and I like keeping it. Next, we have another Hourglass product, and this is the Sublime Flush Ambient Blush. As I said, I love Hourglass's products. Their powders and their formulas are just so beautiful and soft. And this is a very like neutral blush. As you guys can see, there are coral tones and there are more of a cool, like neutral pinky tone. And this isn't super heavily pigmented. So it just gives the most beautiful color without being super heavily pigmented. I kind of like a more natural look to begin with. And I already have like fairly fleshed skin as it is. Um, and I don't usually do a full heavy, like full coverage face of foundation. So I don't find that I need a ton of blush. I kind of just add a little here and there if I feel like I need to touch up a little bit um so this is like the perfect blush for me it's not too overly pigmented it gives a really natural look and the powder is gorgeous so i'm definitely going to be holding on to that blush Okay, next we have a foundation that has not been working for me, and this is the Ambient Soft Glow Foundation from Hourglass in the shade 2.5, and this is a neutral color. But this foundation is definitely too dark for me, and I also have to be honest, I don't love the way that this foundation sits on my skin. I can kind of see it sitting on top of my skin. It's almost a little cakey, and I don't like the way that it applies over sunscreen. So this one definitely has to go. I just cannot make it work. The next one is another foundation that I had purchased previous to that one, and this is in the color 1.5, and this one's also neutral. So as you can see, it's a little bit lighter than the other one. This is more close to my skin tone, but it's a little bit gray and a little ashy uh, compared to my complexion, but it's pretty close. Like when I was in the car and I tried it on one day, it was so close. So I feel like since it's a nice foundation, I want to get my money's worth out of it. I might try mixing it with one of my other foundations and either try to warm it up or cool it down and see if I can't get it to be the perfect shade for me because it is a beautiful formula. I just don't always like how it looks by itself, but maybe if I mix it with another foundation, um, I might be able to find a good color match and I also might like how it sits on my skin. Next, we have a foundation that actually works pretty good for me. This is the Elizabeth Arden Flawless Finish Skin Caring Foundation with Hyaluronic Acid and Vitamin C and E, and this is in the shade 110N. This is honestly one of the closest foundations I have found to my perfect shade for a long time. I've actually purchased this in the past before and I've gone back and repurchased it and I really really like this foundation I wish that I could just be settled with one foundation but I am always tempted to try new formulas and other shades and see if I can't get an even better match and you know I just like trying new foundations because you never know when you're going to find your new holy grail but this one has been pretty good for me it's almost a perfect match for my skin tone it's also a neutral um, shade and I really like it so this one I'm definitely going to hold on to and I do recommend that one Next we have a highlighter from Dior and this is the Dior Dior Forever Highlighter in the color Pearlescent Glow. And this one, you guys, I'll be honest, I love the packaging so much, but if I could do it all over again, I would get the more champagne colored highlighter. This one is the lightest one that they had. It's the pearl colored one and it's almost a little bit too light for me. I'll show you guys what it looks like after, but it almost is like a little disco ball slash New Year's Eve. It has like almost a purple or silver fleck to to it and it's very very cool um, and it's just like a little bit too much for everyday wear for me so I don't wear it very often but I will say that I really love the packaging and it is a really lovely highlighter it's just not one that I tend to gravitate toward a whole lot but for now I'm gonna hold on to it because I do love the packaging but next time I go back and get another one I will just go for the champagne colored one 
Next we have my one and only brow product. This is the Anastasia Beverly Hills Brow Wiz in the color dark brown, I believe. And I don't do a very heavy brow, you guys. I think it's really interesting how over the years, the proper brow shape or brow style has changed so much. In the 90s and 2000s, it was like a skinny brow. And then it was all of a sudden a fluffy, bushy brow. And then it was like the soap brow. And then it was like... The brows that you comb upwards and downwards and backwards and all over the place and honestly i have pretty sparse brows i do but i feel like when god made me he just said you are meant to have not really bushy thick brows because i do not look good when i try to draw on a heavy brow i just think i look better with a soft minimalist very subtle brow so i do do a little bit of brow here and there but nothing too crazy i usually just like i said go for my sunscreen get that skin get that nice glowy dewy finish on point some mascara and i call it a day and i feel my best that way so yeah i don't really use a brow product much at all but this is the only one that i have found that i've really loved so i'm going to hold on to it because it is a great brow product this next item is the Tartlet in Bloom palette from Tarte, and this is a new eyeshadow palette to me. I actually had the Too Faced, I think it was called Natural Eyes palette, and my mom actually loved that palette, and my mom is not somebody who's about to spend $60 or $70 on a eyeshadow palette, and she asked me where she could get it, and I felt so bad because I knew she would never buy it for herself, so I just gifted her the Too Faced palette, and I got this one instead to replace it with for myself. So this has the absolute most beautiful colors, you guys. It's a very neutral palette, and I also like how it has some shimmery and some matte tones and also some darker, smokier tones if you want to do like a smoked out eye or something for the evening. So you can pretty much get away with doing any kind of makeup look just with this palette. I really love the colors more toward the left outer corner. So I like the Charmed, the Flower Child. Um, I just really like those kind of lighter um, tones. And then I like more the neutral, almost gray tone third from the left on the top. I also like that there's a couple of darker, smokier shades. So you can pretty much do any eye look with this palette. Um, it is brand new. I've hardly touched it, but I really, really like it. And I think I like it better than the um, Natural Eyes from Too Faced. Next is a primer that was given to me by MAC. It's just a little sample. I don't usually use makeup primers because I'm just such a simple person. And my goal, like I said, is to get my complexion right and to look after my skin. And honestly, you guys, I feel like as I take better and better care of my skin, the better it looks even without having a primer or without makeup. I honestly, most days, just roll with sunscreen and mascara, and that is all I put on. Um, so I really don't know if I need a primer, but I will keep it just in case one day I decide I want to get adventurous and try it and do a full face of makeup, and you never know, could change my life, so I'll hold on to this sample for now. The next item is another highlighter, and this one is from Becca Cosmetics. And this is what it looks like. So you guys, this one is a little bit more champagne colored compared to the Dior. It does look pretty light and it is a pretty light sort of a white highlighter. I think it's the lightest one that they have in the range, but it is slightly more champagne-y shimmery compared to the Dior. And I really, really like this one. This one doesn't have like any kind of a glittery effect. It's a very fine, subtle powder. And I really, really like the sort of sheer satiny finish. So I definitely will keep this one. Um, I love the way that it applies it's super flattering I've actually used it a ton and I actually like highlighter even more than I like blush so yeah this is one of my favorite products and I will definitely hold on to it next I have a highlighter stick from Anastasia Beverly Hills and I think this is in the shade moon glow or pearlescent glow or something and this is an absolutely beautiful kind of a more of a champagne-y almost a pinky like pearl type of glow to it it's very very pretty absolutely stunning on the cheeks I don't put this one on the bridge of my nose I find that this actually sinks into my pores so I don't like it for my nose but I do like this one for the tops of the cheeks it's just stunning um, I actually wore this one when we went on vacation and I really really enjoyed it and it's definitely one of the darker more champagne um, highlighters that I have so I'm gonna hold on to that for sure next we have an eyeshadow palette from Chanel actually healthy glow natural eyeshadow palette in the color medium and this is just a beautiful very neutral like taupey brown type of eyeshadow palette which is usually my go-to I absolutely love this eyeshadow palette you guys I like that you can do kind of all different eye looks it's very neutral, it's very pretty, and also the powder feels like silk. It goes on your skin so nicely, so this is one I'm definitely going to hold on to. 
Next, we have an eyeshadow palette from Dior, and this is the one that I am contemplating letting go of. And this is what the colors look like, you guys. They're absolutely beautiful. And as much as I like them, the only thing is I don't really use most of the colors. I mean, there's only five colors, but I don't use the one in the middle. It's a little bit too reddish burgundy for me. And overall, it's just kind of a dark, very smoky palette. It's great for doing a smoky eye, but I don't often do a real dark gray smoked out eye. I usually go more for like neutrals and sort of a soft everyday look. So as much as I think that this palette is beautiful, I just do not get enough use out of it. So this one I honestly think I'm going to let go of because the other two palettes I can do pretty much any look I need to do. And this one I just do not use enough, even though it's absolutely stunning. My favorite color is this gray one in the corner. It's kind of a purpley, bluey, gray color. It's really beautiful. And the finish and the powder is stunning. They blend out really nicely. It's absolutely gorgeous, but you guys, I don't feel like I need that palette when I can get all the looks I want to get with my other two palettes. Next we have a blush and this is the NARS blush in the color Deep Throat which is kind of an interesting name for it and this is a little bit more of a neutral almost a cooler toned blush. It's an absolutely beautiful like pretty almost peachy shade and when I first pulled it out of the pack I wasn't sure if I wanted to keep it or not but you guys after I swatched it again on my finger I pretty much talked myself into keeping it again. It's absolutely stunning. So you guys, when I first was filming, I did put this blush in the declutter pile. Later on, you'll see I ended up pulling it out, but I wasn't sure if I needed this blush and the hourglass because the hourglass is the one I tend to gravitate toward the most. So you guys, this is what it looks like when I swatch it. It's just such a beautiful, like corally pinky. Oh my gosh. I mean, the color is to die for you guys. It's to die for. I just don't wear blush a lot like and I so because I'm so simple I didn't feel like I needed to so I did leave it in the declutter pile to begin with but yeah later in the video I did end up pulling it back out <laughs> And the last item, you guys, is another blush. This one's from Charlotte Tilbury, and this is in the color Love Glow. So this one, you guys, is a really beautiful, more of a pinky, peachy, sort of a warmer toned blush. Really loved it when I first got it, but after I got it home and wore it a few times, I realized it was just a little too um, peachy for me. So I've hardly touched it because I do tend to gravitate more toward my hourglass blush. Um, and I think I'm actually going to gift this one to my mom. It's a beautiful, neutral, like I said, peachy tone. And my my mom told me she was looking for a really nice peachy blush and my mom honestly does really nice makeup like she's in her 60s and she does just a beautiful flawless full face of makeup and I know she'll be so happy to get this so since it's not one that I gravitate toward a lot and I think it's a little too warm for me I'm going to pass this one on to her and this is the point in the video when I decided that I didn't just want the hourglass blush I did want to hold on to the NARS a little bit longer because I haven't had it that long and the color you guys it's so beautiful I bought it for a reason I'm gonna hold on to it a little bit longer and the Charlotte Tilbury one I am going to give to my mom so at least I've gotten rid of one blush today <laughs> And I did want to give you guys a color comparison of these three blushes so you can really see the color differences here. So you can really see that the Charlotte Tilbury is definitely a little bit warmer. The Hourglass is a little bit more neutral and the NARS is just so beautiful. The Hourglass has those little strips of warm mixed in with the cool so it's perfect for neutral skin tones and it's just so stunning. And that deep throat color is just to die for and the formula is so beautiful but yeah you can definitely tell that the charlotte tilbury is a little bit more on the warm side and i think my mom is really going to like it and i also wanted to do a color comparison of the dior highlighter with the becca cosmetics so you can really see that even though the becca one is not warm by any means it's not tan or bronzed but you can see it's a little bit more of a champagne color it has just a hint of warmth to it compared to the dior which is very much like disco ball flashing lights silver blue and purple hued a little bit <laughs> and a little more glittery compared to the becca so you can see on my middle finger is the dior and you see how it's a little bit more glittery and on my pointer finger we have the becca cosmetics you can really see the glitter in the dior it's very very sparkly sort of whereas the becca one is just this super fine like satiny powder that just blends out so nicely and it's just a little bit more everyday appropriate like I just don't reach for the Dior very often but I just wanted to show you guys the difference um, the Dior definitely has a great color payoff though and it's a fantastic highlighter it's just not always like the first thing I reach for so that is it for the makeup declutter portion, you guys. That is all the makeup I'm keeping. That is what I'm getting rid of. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put everything back in my bag. So 
so you guys before we get into my brushes these are the items I was able to declutter it's not a ton of stuff but I don't have a ton of makeup I don't have like 16 foundations and 10 eyeshadow palettes so I feel like this was pretty good considering all right so getting into the makeup brushes it looks like I have a lot of brushes but if you know you know I feel like brushes just have a time and a place so let's just go through them one by one here so the very first brush is this concealer brush from rare beauty by Selena Gomez this is actually meant for concealer but I absolutely love this brush for contouring my nose I love that it's got that flat side it's just perfect for contouring so I'm gonna hold on to that for sure use it all the time Next is the Pro Powder Brush, the number 50 brush from Sephora. I use this brush all the time for finishing powder and I love how it's nice and fluffy. That one gets lots of use. The next one is a stippling brush that I got from Quo from Shoppers Drug Mart and it really needs to be cleaned. I really like the airbrushed finish that this one gives, but it definitely does need to be washed. Next is another finishing brush or powder brush, and this one I actually really, really like. It's from Quo, it's nothing too fancy. This one gives me like an airbrushed finish, literally an airbrushed finish. I love this one for using my Hourglass setting powder. It just makes everything look totally flawless, and I actually use it a lot. I kind of alternate between this one and my other powder brush, so this one's not going anywhere. Next we have a brush that I use for highlighter and blush together. It's just a brush from Sephora. I'm not even sure exactly what the name of the brush is. This one is perfect to use for highlighter and blush and I kind of put highlighter and blush in the same place on my cheek. So it works perfectly fine and it's just a really nice like domed dome shaped brush and I do enjoy it. Next we have the brush that I use for contouring for my forehead and my cheeks and this is just a flat kind of angle contour brush. I don't even know where this is from. It's probably from a uh, quo from Shoppers Drug Mart. But yeah this is just a really great brush. I like that it's got like a chiseled edge. It makes it really nice for contouring. Then I have a couple of flat skinny brushes and these are good for either doing your brows or putting like an eyeliner and I don't typically do like I say a heavy brow or even a heavy eyeliner but there does come a time sometimes that I want to add a little bit of a straighter line somewhere and in that case these brushes really do come in handy so I'll be holding on to both of them then I have my tweezers and for some reason I always keep my tweezers in with my brushes I don't know why but I just do and then I have another brush that I use to contour the side of my nose this one again I think is meant to be a concealer brush but it's such a perfect shape and I just really like it for contouring the sides of my nose and even though I don't do a full heavy face of makeup I contour my nose just about every single time I put any makeup on it's one of my favorite things to do and this brush works great for it then I have a whole bunch of eyeshadow brushes and if you know you know you just need lots of brushes they all serve a different purpose so I have kind of a smaller fluffy brush for getting in the crease I also have a bit of a larger fluffy brush for blending I have a couple of large flat brushes just for putting product on the lid and then I have a couple of flat smaller brushes just for also applying color so yeah all of these brushes are great and I'm going to be keeping all of them I use them all for something and I feel like you need lots of different eyeshadow brushes and that is everything you guys so that's pretty much it for this declutter sorry again that I had to do voiceover I can't believe that I did all that filming and the microphone was not on but thank you guys so much for watching I hope that this video was somehow entertaining or maybe inspired you to do a little bit of decluttering of your own or that you got busy and decluttered with me while you watched and thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you all very soon in my next one